What's up, my friend? Mike Robertson here. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about in-season program design. This is something that I've been fascinated by for years when I started off in pro soccer and now as I'm programming for more high level basketball players, I'm just fascinated with how you set up a training week when you've got all these competing demands, whether it's travel, competition, or just recovery as a whole. So what I wanna to do today is cover two different training examples based on the sports that I've worked in, one being soccer and one being basketball. So in soccer, one of the great things about writing an in-season program is it's very clear when you have games and there tends to be a very rhythmic approach to the entire training week. So in a lot of cases, we're gonna use Saturday as an example. And so if you kind of look at the training week, generally your Sunday is gonna be an off day or a recovery day. So you're not gonna do too much there. For Monday, you're gonna get in and you're generally gonna do something. You're gonna do some form of recovery as a team. But I love to do just a recovery lift here as well. So maybe you go in, you do your rolling, your resets, your readiness, R1, R2, R3. And then maybe you're gonna do like a light flush on the bike. Maybe you're gonna go in and do more of an extensive circuit where you're dragging the sled or throwing med balls. But I like to do something here to really set the stage for the rest of the week. So recovery lift this day, Tuesday, generally you're gonna have a little bit higher intensity practice. Maybe you do a little bit of R1 through R3, but in a lot of cases, Wednesday is gonna be your highest intensity practice. You're gonna go out, you're gonna be on the field a long time. So if you wanna consolidate stressors, and if you're interested in this, definitely check out Daniel Bove's Quadrant System book. But if you're gonna go really hard on the pitch, it only makes sense to consolidate that stress. You don't wanna be sore all week. So hey, if you're gonna go hard this day on the pitch, get a hard lift in that day as well. Thursday is generally gonna be a little bit lighter. Friday is gonna be a quick and easy day on the pitch. So in this case, what I'll do with a lot of my soccer players is we'll go in the gym and we're gonna do a lot of speed, power, or explosiveness focused activities. So we may only be in the gym 15 to 20 minutes, but it's gonna be light, it's gonna be snappy, and we're gonna make sure they feel bouncy and fresh so that when they play Saturday, they're ready to rock. So that's how I might set it up in soccer. And again, it's a little bit easier because in general, you're only planning for one match per week. Now, basketball can be a heck of a lot harder because as you can see here, it's not uncommon to have two, three, maybe even four or five games in any given seven or eight day stretch. So you gotta be a little bit more proactive here and you gotta be a little bit more intent on what days you're gonna get your lifts in. So let's say for example, Wednesday is a game day. Tuesday, I may go in and I may do my speed and power work. I'm just gonna say Q3, because again, I love Daniel Bove's Quadrant System book. It helps kind of give us terminology so that we're all speaking the same language. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do a Q3 lift, speed, power, explosiveness. Game night, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do a quadrant four. So that's gonna be my big lifting day. And again, it depends on the athlete. So if you've got somebody that's not playing a lot of minutes, you may do a lot more work and volume with them versus if you got a guy that's playing 35, 36 minutes a night, you're probably not gonna do a whole lot. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna lift that day. Maybe this day is a quadrant one recovery type session. Again, I'm a big believer doing something is better than doing nothing. So what I may do on this day, R1, R2, R3, and then a flush, if they did a lot, if I feel like they need a little bit of extra work or if they need a little bit of extra kind of opening up and loosening up, that's where we'll do a recovery type session. Friday, we go back to a Q3, speed, power, explosiveness, something fast something that makes them feel like they're fresh and ready to go. And then you come back to game day and we're back to quadrant four. So as you can see, there's tons of different ways that you can set this up. And again, this is just one example. I'm sure there's numerous. Uh, if you haven't listened to Daniel and I's podcast from a while back, check that out. I'm getting him back on the show soon so we can dive into this into more depth because I love his framework and I was using elements of it before, but I love the terminology and I think using similar terminology will help all of us get better results with the athletes that we're coaching.